Welcome to Sabbath School brought to you by It Is Written. We're glad that you could join us again as we continue this journey through the book of Psalms. We're on lesson number 10 of 13, so we're almost at the end of the quarter, but not there yet. The title of this week's lesson is Lessons from the Past. What can we learn from the past that will help us in the present and prepare us for the future? That's what we're going to be looking at today. But first, we're going to start with prayer. Father, we want to thank you for leading us on this journey so far. You have been in the present, in the past. You're going to be in the future. And we ask that you will guide us through today as we learn more about what is to come. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today we're joined once again by the author of this quarter's Sabbath School lesson. This is Dr. Dragoslava Santrak. We're delighted to have you back again, Slava. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I'm happy to be here. Now, as we've been studying for the last 10 weeks, it's yes. very clear that you love the Psalms. Yes. There's so much in the Psalms, so many lessons to learn, uh, so much hope, so much yes. encouragement, yes. especially when we're going through challenging times. This week, we're taking a look at a different element of the Psalms, and that is a historical element of the Psalms. There are some Psalms that are certainly songs, and we've looked at some elements of that. But there are also psalms that are more historical in nature. How do they differ from the other psalms, and what benefit do they have to us? Yes. Well, praise of God in some psalms takes a trajectory of uh, teaching history and drawing valuable lessons from, from them. So they are a little bit different from the, a typical uh, hymn of praise or maybe a typical prayer or lament. So they have this didactic purpose to teach something. And um, this is an element that I believe sometimes we forget, that part of praising God is also understanding his truth and living in truth. So uh, lessons of the past and these historical Psalms are very valuable. There are a couple of them that are purely historical, like Psalm uh, 78, 105, 106, 136, 135. And in these Psalms, the Psalmists retell the salvific history, the past, and to teach the people certain lessons, also inspire people about God's faithfulness to His people throughout all these years and various generations, the ups and downs. So learning from the past is crucial. And also, uh, I would like to add another very important thing is that when we read the historical Psalms, we realize, and they are meant to help us realize, that we are part of that grand unfolding of history of God's people, that we are not some lonely rangers in these generations, but then that we become and we are part of a large community of faith that goes through generations and, and centuries, and that we can claim biblical history as our history. So it is not their father Abraham, it is also my father Abraham. It's not just their Moses lawgiver, it is my Moses the prophet. It's not just their King David. In Jesus Christ, it is my King David as well. So biblical history is also my heritage. It provides uh, uh, to me insight into my spiritual roots. And this is one very important uh, aspect that these Psalms want to underline for us. So you made mention of a, of a couple of different examples there of, of Father Abraham and, and David and, and others. What are some of your favorite elements of those historical Psalms that have, that have uplifted you and given you encouragement as you see yourself in part of that history? Yes, yes. For example, we can look at Psalm 78, it's a long psalm, it has 72 verses, and it takes us on a journey through the history of God's people, starting with the covenant in Jacob, then through Exodus to the time of the wilderness, 
And through all these te uh, texts uh, and verses, we read about God's faithfulness being challenged by people's unfaithfulness. And we read how God blesses his children, but then verse 11, it says, and they forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them, marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers. And then he says he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. But then the next generation has a tendency to forget. And you see, when people forget, with that forgetfulness also comes forgetting your own identity and forgetting about God in the present, and that led them to idolatry. So what I find fascinating and even encouraging here is that in spite of our weaknesses and our tendency to take God's blessings for granted and even forget them, God does not forget us. And when I sin, I realize the people before me, I need to be humble and not try to be a superhero when I'm not, to be better than others because I'm not. I find consolation that when other people, my spiritual ancestors sinned and failed, that whenever they sought God, God revealed himself and forgave them and led them further. So th this, is, this is a great comfort. It teaches us humility, but it also encourages us in God's grace and mercy, in his faithfulness. So we, we don't have to feel that we are alone in stumbling and falling, yes. that in, yes. in history, many others have stumbled and fallen, yes. and uh, not that we should feel comfortable in that. Exactly. Yeah. But we should recognize that there is hope, hope. for us, yes. just as there was hope for, for them. What do the Psalms teach us about remembrance? Uh, in what ways did God's people um, in the Psalms remember history? How yes. did they do that? Yes, there are constant appeals, not just in the Psalms, the several Psalms I mentioned, 105, 106, 135, 136, but throughout the Bible, there's this constant appeals to remember God's great deeds in the past. Why? Because that's our identity. Our identity is shaped by our past. Once we forget our roots, we become an easy target for whoever and whatever ideology is there to grab us and claim our devotion. But when we know who we are and whose we are, then we have this protection against temptation, against idolatry, against all these things that are there to to separate us from God. And, and, and the Bible would say, for example, in Deuteronomy, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations, ask your father and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. It is important, it also establishes and strengthens the fellowship between various generations. Sometimes we speak about young people not being able to fully identify with their faith today, with their church. Well, elders, fathers, mothers, share your experiences with the young people. Show them where their roots are. Tell them who they are and whose they are. I think that's important, the, those two things, the who they are and whose they are because when we understand whose we are, that's a whole different, that, that's no longer just um, educational. Yes. That's very personal when yes. we realize that we belong to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Uh, very, very personal. When you look at the stories of, of people's history in here and how frequently Jesus quoted from the Psalms yes. and, and other Bible writer, New Testament writers quoted from the Psalms, it seems to me that they had a pretty good idea of who they were and whose they were as they looked at the Psalms. Uh, if there's somebody who's watching right now and thinking, ah, I, 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 I love Jesus, I believe in him at least, but I'm, I'm still a little bit shaky on some things, what might you share with them 
a, a word of encouragement here from the Psalms to, to help them connect to their identity, whose they are. Yes, yes. Well, education is very important. And when I say education, I mean informing ourselves, learning about that, that past. This is something that God cannot and will not do for us. He has given us His Word. And, and the Psalms, even if, if, if we think that the Old Testament is too long to read, well, the Psalms give us the history of the Old Testament in a nutshell. So if you want to uh, 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 inform yourself, educate yourself, in the history of God's people, which is your history because you are the child of God. I encourage you to read Psalm 78, to read Psalm 105, 106. There, in a nutshell, you will find all the main events of the history in the Old Testament. They tell us about our roots and also provide valuable lessons to us where we can learn from the shortcomings from of, of our spiritual forefathers, but also learn the lessons of obedience when they were blessed. So these Psalms really are educational and given to us for our benefit, for our upbringing in faith. You know, it's been said that people who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And you look at some of the history of God's people, there's some of that that we don't want to repeat. Uh, they've kind of wandered down the wrong path. They've uh, histories of rebellion. You see a, a kind of a roller coaster experience for some. I don't think we desire to have that roller coaster experience in faith. We desire to have a nice, steady, firm faith, and maybe even one that's on an incline. Yes, yes. Um, but if we don't know the history, if we don't know who we are, if yes. we don't know whose we are, yes. then we have. A, there's a very high likelihood that like you mentioned, ideologies can come in and, and take us away. Uh, and, and even more than us, people that we care about, people that we love, children or, or brothers or sisters, uh, the adversary is very hard at work, but so is God. Yes, and exactly. That's exactly. the encouraging thing. And people, we all search for answers. We all want to know answers to these questions. And whose answer are we answers are we to, to, to adopt, if not from the one who loves us, created us, and redeemed us, the one who constantly remembers his people, even when they so stubbornly forget him. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, we're good at that. Yes. We're very good at that. Yes. We are going to continue taking a look at history in the book of Psalms, but if you want to get more out of your study of the book of Psalms, Make sure that you pick up the companion book to this quarter Sabbath school lesson at itiswritten.shop. Make sure you go to itiswritten.shop. You'll find the book there. Pick it up and you will be blessed indeed as you study it. We look forward to seeing you back in just a moment as we continue looking at the Psalms. It has followed God's people since the dawn of time under the pharaohs of Egypt. The decree against the Jews in the time of Esther. Herod's decree against baby boys in the time of Jesus. And Jesus said many of his followers would be persecuted. The Roman Emperor Diocletian took persecution to a whole new level. Houses of worship were destroyed. And Christians who refused to sacrifice to the gods were put to death. History has a habit of repeating. And the Bible makes clear that when it comes to persecution, history is going to repeat. Don't miss History Repeats on itiswritten.tv. Planning for your financial future is a vital aspect of Christian stewardship. For this reason, It Is Written is pleased to offer free planned giving and estate services. For information on how we can help you, please call 800-992-2219. Call today or visit our website, hislegacy.com. Call 800-992-2219.
Welcome back to Sabbath School brought to you by It Is Written. We're taking a look at history in the Psalms. Slava, let me ask you this question. Um, how does remembering the past lead to repentance and praise of God? Because as, as we remember him, hopefully it helps us to realize where we are and who we are and our need. Yes, yes. When we read the Psalms, the historical Psalms especially, that share about the various mistakes and shortcomings of God's people, and they also explain why that happened. We learn something for ourselves. Maybe we will recognize some things that we have been repeating without knowing, or maybe because of the stubbornness of our heart. But either way, recognizing these things will lead us to repentance, especially when we see how gracious and kind God is and not giving up on people. So he has forgiven people in the past. And when we fall short, we can look back at him and his forgiveness of others and know that there is some hope for us. But, uh, but that, repentance, uh, that repentance comes by the moving of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And as we're spending time in His Word, especially in something like the yes. Book of Psalms, the Holy Spirit certainly has more opportunities to reach out and touch our hearts uh, and, and to turn us in the right direction. What happens if we're, if we're not familiar with the past uh, or if we were familiar with it, but it, it slips away? I don't, you've probably never had this, this challenge, but I as, I, as I gain gray hairs, my memory is not as good as it used to be. And, uh, and unfortunately, things slip away if I don't constantly keep reminding myself of them. Uh, is there a lesson there for us as well? Yes, yes. Well, maybe as an encouragement for both you and I, who may very soon have this problem of remembering things due to our bodily deterioration, the remembering that the Psalms talk about is not just an intellectual memory or intellectual knowledge of the past. Remembering always leads to action. When in the Bible says, for example, that God remembered Noah, that was not a passive intellectual memory thing. Oh, I remember Noah, he's somewhere in the ark. Nice. And I'm going on with my activities. When God remembered Noah, it means that God stood up to deliver Noah. So remembers always leads to action. When the Psalms call us to remember the Lord, it means uh, uh, that our actions are there to, to, to kind of support and demonstrate that memory. So yes, we know, we need to know the facts of our history, but if that Remembering if that knowledge does not lead to appropriate action, which will be exemplified in the way of life, in the way we, we, we approach God and treat other people, then we are not remembering it rightly. And uh, not remembering will definitely lead into idolatry, will definitely lead away from God. And I love the Hebrew word to hear, shama, means to hear, but it also means to obey. Meaning, if you don't obey what you hear, it means that you didn't hear. The same is with remembering. If you don't act on your remembrance, on your memory, it means that you actually, in practice, just forgot and, and, and don't care. So remembering is important because it leads to the correct action. It shapes our today, the memory of the past shapes our today and also provides hope for the future and vision of the future. So this remembering is kind of interactive. It's not just intellectual, but there is, there's action that takes place or that should take place. Uh, otherwise, I suppose if we, were, if we simply intellectually remembered but didn't act on it, then it, it, it works against us rather than working for us, which is the way that God designed and desires for it to work, for us to remember and put into action. How does remembering, when we talk this active remembering now, how does remembering history guard us against uh, idolatry and error and wandering off after these other ideologies or whatever the case may be. Yes. 
Well, as we already mentioned, knowing, learning who we are and whose we are will get us well established and rooted in the truth of the one only living sovereign God. But losing the remembrance of that, losing the remembrance of his past acts of mercy and greatness will, as we said, leave us open to the various uh, options and ideologies to, to take hold of our mind and provide answers instead. But when we are rooted in God, that actually leads to praise, leads to action that we, that we highlighted. And when we read the Psalms, that's exactly what the people did. Whenever they forgot that it was God who delivered them from Egypt, they would turn to idols and conform themselves to the culture surrounding them, the culture of other religions and other people that were always so very appealing because they forgot whose they are, whose they were and who they were. You know, when we take a look at Christianity today as, as a whole, the number of Christians worldwide is decreasing. It's not increasing. And I think, you know, depending on which studies you want to take a look at, uh, much of that is because I think Christians have forgotten who they are and whose they are and their history. And we start to listen to the other voices out there that sound convincing. They are, uh, well, they're encouraging from a certain point of view, uh, offering, well, offering kind of like what Satan offered at the beginning, freedom and uh, free yourself from the shackles of of Christianity and tradition. But really, this is the freedom. Yes. This is the freedom. And we, we take a look at this history and it should, mm -hmm. it should help us to see that freedom. Yes, and, and sometimes people today reject Christianity because of Christians. And I would say this is because we as Christians in general forgot all these lessons. And then, as you said, we start repeating the mistakes of the past. And by doing that, people see all the shortcomings and they say, if that's Christianity, I don't want to be part of that. But instead of repeating the past or maybe being ashamed of certain things in the past, we should face the shortcomings. We should face those dark times and say, yes, this is what happened, but I'm going to learn as a community of faith, we are going to learn from that and become better by God's grace. So we will own our history, we will acknowledge our mistakes, but we will learn from them and give glory to God and become a real testimony that will inspire people to come to God and accept Christ. So history is not something that we should shun. Yes. It's not something that we should cover up. Exactly. Uh, some history is, well, it's unpleasant. Yes. It's yes. very dark. Yes. But if we forget it, if we cover it up, if we act like it's not there, yes. we have a higher likelihood of going back and doing the same thing yes. again. Yes. Uh, but embracing that history as history mm -hmm. and saying, yes, this happened uh, in, in the history of Christianity. Mm -hmm. We can say, okay, it did happen, but by God's grace, I'm not going to let it happen yes. in my life or, or on my watch, as yes. it were. Yes. And we can have encouragement in that. So awareness yes. is very, very important. And for that reason, God was not ashamed to give all the details of his faithful servants, all the shortcomings, because we are not to cover these things up, but learn from them. And, and move forward, become better. Yeah, and, and I think we can. David, yes, yes. David was wonderful. Yes. He had his shortcomings. Yes. You know, you look through the Bible. Peter, yes. great guy, had some shortcomings. Yes. Paul, he had a few shortcomings too. Um, I won't speak for you, I have some shortcomings. But, you know, by God's grace, if we have shortcomings and others have had shortcomings, mm -hmm. if they made it through, by His grace, we can too. And that, that history is very helpful in that. Slava, share with me a, a resource that's available to some people who want to learn more about history, not so much ancient history, but more recent history that could be a benefit. Yes, uh, I will gladly share about one wonderful resource, 
which is fully online and freely accessible to all. It is called the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, shortly known by many as ESDA or ESDA. Well, this wonderful resource has more than 4,000 stories, historical stories, which have been fully documented with sources, footnotes, and peer-reviewed. Therefore, they are reliable and authoritative and provide insights into the wonderful leadings of God's children by God in more recent history. Yes, we are not hiding our shortcomings. We are learning from them and we are glorifying God who saw His people through these difficulties and made us triumphant by this grace. So the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, more than 4,000 articles, more than 12,000 historical images, and many, many videos about Adventist missionaries, educators, pioneers, various uh, uh, events, uh, articles about how Adventist church started in many places around the world. And when we read more recent history, we uh, become more connected to this wonderful and grand people of God in history. Sometimes we, we tend to see like a huge gap between biblical history and us today. But God has had and still has His faithful people throughout all these uh, decades and centuries up to this very day. And I invite our readers to read and uh, uh, find the encyclopedia at encyclopedia.adventist.org. One more time, encyclopedia.adventist.org and learn about God's wonderful leading and His teachings in our recent history. A wonderful resource. Slava, thank you so much for that resource. And I hope that you will avail yourself of that resource as well. It has wonderful articles in there, a lot of history that as you read it, will help you make it through today and by God's grace, prepare you for the challenges yet to come. Speaking of yet to come, we have just a couple more weeks left together in this quarter studying the book of Psalms. We look forward to having you join us again next week as we continue once again here on Sabbath School, brought to you by It Is Written.